Christmas is just a marketing ploy set up by ancient Roman greeting card companies 2,000 years ago. You know Jesus only wears red because of a Coca-Cola advert. But look, it doesn't matter. We have to buy each other gifts because if we don't, we'll die alone. Board games make for perfect gifts, which is convenient because I have a YouTube channel about them. In this video, I'm going to share 10 games which are great to give as presents to family members, friends or colleagues. I've chosen games that are suitable for people just getting into gaming or who only play at Christmas, but which are still fun for board game addicts like myself. If you'd like to buy any of the games, there are Amazon links in the description below, for which a small cut will go towards actual lol. And if 100 people use the links, Jeff Bezos has promised me that he'll pay his taxes. Sushi Roll is the best new family board game. The dice in the game are little sushi rolls, and you have to decide which one to eat as they go around the conveyor belt. You win points by eating matching sets of sushi, so you can decide whether to play it safe and get two points from Salmon Nigiri, or hold out to try and get three sashimi for 13 points. You can see which dice are coming up on the conveyor belt so you know which colours you'll get, but when they get here you have to roll them, and it's always exciting to see if you get the sushi you want. Sushi roll plays really well from two to five players, so you can even buy it for the family who had one too many kids. It's fun, quick to play, and for ages eight and up. Clask is basically air hockey you can play at home, but with a few touches that make it even more fun. The goal is to get it in the goal by hitting the ball around the pitch with your playing piece, which you're controlling via a magnetized stick underneath the table. You'll be trying to bounce it off the sides and hit it as fast as possible so that your opponent can't block it. But be careful, if you're too reckless and you lose control of your piece, or it ends up in your goal, you concede a point. And you have to watch out for the three little magnets in the middle of the pitch, if you get too close to them and two of them get stuck to your wand, your opponent gets a point. Clask is brilliant, energetic fun for two players that anyone can enjoy. It's full of big moments, nail-biting finishes and fluky goals. You don't need to be good at it to have fun, but it is a skill that you can master. There's a world championships of Clask. If you get really good at it, you can do things like use the ball to knock the magnets onto your opponent. Overbooked is for players who like a puzzle to solve. Your job is to seat passengers on a plane and keep them all happy. You pick a card which gives you a group of passengers and how they want to sit. You need to fit that shape onto your plane. To score points, you're trying to put all the lovebirds in pairs, all the rugby players in one big group, and make sure the kids are surrounded on all sides by an adult. Empty seats will cost you points, but the shapes are tricky to fit in, and if you double book an existing customer, you kick them off the plane and lose a point. It's a really enjoyable challenge to get lost in. Overbooked plays well from one to four players. It's a great present for the thinkers in the family, or anyone who is fed up with how mean some board games can be. In Overbooked, you're in charge of your own destiny. Just One is the world's simplest party game, and one you can play on the couch, so it's perfect for the post-Christmas dinner slump. And it brings the family together because you're working with each other to win the game. One player has to guess a word. Every other player will write down a one-word clue for them in private. But before you reveal them, you show each other, and if any of the clues match, you have to wipe them both out. They won't be used. You show the ones that are left to the guesser, and they have one guess to get it right. So your clues have to be good, but also quirky enough so that the other players won't have written it. Just One is for three to seven players, and is just the sort of game that can handle your auntie's constant questions, your drunk uncle, and even grandma falling asleep halfway through if she wants to. I'd recommend this game to anyone, it's a modern classic. Blockbuster is a fun party game for movie fans, and a great gift for anyone that rented VHS tapes in the 90s. You play on teams, and first off, two players go head-to-head -to, -head to name movies in a category against a timer. For example, movies with bears in them. You shout one out, then hit the timer, and go back and forth until one player can't think of one. The Jungle Book. Paddington. Whoever wins the head-to-head -head gets to pick which movie cards they will have to get their teammates to guess, and which they pass to the other team. Then in 30 seconds they give their clues. One of them they can only give a one-word clue for, another they must say a quote from that movie, and the third they will act out, do a charade. Blockbuster is a fun twist on games like Time's Up and Monica's, for groups from 4 to 10 players. You don't need to be a movie buff to be good at it, you just need to have heard of some famous movies. 
Paranormal Detectives is a murder mystery game that everyone should be playing instead of Cluedo. One person will play as the ghost, and they're trying to tell the other players who killed them, how and why they did it, where it happened and what the murder weapon was, but they can only communicate through typical ghostly ways. The detectives will ask a question, then play a card that tells the ghost how to give their answer. It could be by arranging two bits of string, by using a Ouija board, by making a noise or by drawing on the detective's back. The detectives will make notes on what they've learned and they're racing to piece together the mystery before everyone else. Paranormal Detectives plays from two to six players. It's got the fun of trying to solve a classic whodunit, but with a good dose of silliness too. Cat Lady is an adorable card game that is great to play with parents or anyone who finds games too complicated. As a cat lady, you want to collect lots of cats and cat toys and even costumes for your cat. You need to watch out what other players are collecting to see if you can compete with them. And you have to feed your cats or they'll run away, so make sure to collect the fish, milk or chicken that they want. Picking cards is easy, you just select a row or column of cards to take. Since all the cards are out in the open, it makes Cat Lady a really easy game to teach and for players to understand. Cat Lady is for two to four players and is a great present for cat lovers, parents, or non-gamers. Similo is the perfect stocking stuffer, secret Santa present, or gift for someone who you don't want to spend too much money on because what they got you last year was rubbish. It's a deck of cards with famous historical people on, and the game is to identify the secret character. Let's say it's Marie Curie. One player will give clues about the secret character by playing another historical figure, either by saying they're similar to the secret character or not similar. So you might play Isaac Newton as similar because they're both scientists. The other players will discuss the clues and they have to eliminate more and more cards each round until the final round when there's only two left. If they pick the right one, you all win the game. Similo works well for two players upwards. It's great for getting everyone talking as you try and interpret the clues. I like the history set the best, but you can also get fables with fairy tale characters. The Mind is a one of a kind experience that is a great gift for your couple's friends for you to all play together. It's a game of trying to read each other's mind. You each have a hand of numbered cards and the goal is for everyone to play their cards in numerical order, but without talking. So you have to somehow sense when to play your numbers without knowing what numbers other people have and if anyone makes a mistake, you all lose a life. It sounds nonsense, but it works, and the more you play with the same people, you develop an understanding. It's so much fun just sitting in silence, staring at each other, hoping for a sign of when to play your card. The game is full of suspense. The mind is great for two to four players, or five and six if you want to make it really hard. It's not just a great gift, it's one of my favorite games of all time. It's a wonderful social experience that everyone should try at least once. Dragon's Breath is the best kids game you can buy this Christmas and one that parents will enjoy playing as well. One player will be the dragon each round and melt the ice surrounding these gems. They take the top ring from the stack and some of the gems will fall out. But before they do, the other players have to bet which color of gems will fall out the most. So everyone is watching in anticipation, hoping the dragon knocks out theirs. Meanwhile, the dragon is trying to carefully remove the ring to keep everyone else's colors from falling out. But they can only fight gravity so much. Dragon's Breath plays from two to five players and ages five and up. Give your kids the childhood we never had with a board game that's proper fun and doesn't last forever. Those are my top 10 Christmas gifts of 2019. If you'd like to buy any of them, there are links in the description below. And if you'd like some more recommendations, I have four videos from the last four Christmases that have tips on games that are great to play at Christmas, games you can play on the couch, and the cheapest games you can buy as gifts. Click the I in the top right corner to see those. This video wouldn't exist without the support of my Patreon backers, like Noel Namron. Thank you, Noel. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching and happy Christmas.